So first, I want to ask, raise your hand if you've seen my content before. Okay, okay, it's three hands. Great, because this is going to be fun. Raise, raise your hands again if you know the brand King Forex. Okay, surprisingly, only three people, four people. So King Forex is a non-alcoholic beverage brand. It's uh, one of the brands that has a stunning um, brand visual representations. So here are four images we have here. Uh, I want to play a game with you guys. So look carefully. Image number one, image number two, image number three, and four. Raise your hand if you think image number one is AI-driven image I crafted. Okay. See a few hands here. What about this one? Is this one AI driven? Okay, I see a couple more. What about number three? I see a few more. What about number four? Okay, so who think the number three was AI driven? All right, okay, so the correct image, the, the right answer is image number two and number three are AI driven image I crafted. Ne Image number one and the four are photographies by Kenny Forex. So <laughs> jobs are gone, jobs are gone to um, AI everywhere. This is a very popular theory people are spreading online, but I'd rather to think only way to keep AI from taking our job is to use AI, do your job better. So today's agenda, we'll go over how to apply responsible usage for AI, capabilities, limitation of AI, practical use cases for your creative team, and my framework to craft AI-driven, unique AI-driven images. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility, says Uncle Ben, but I say with great power comes greater responsibility. Of course, I mean AI. So um, let's get away, uh, get over uh, with some guidelines here because these are very important but not very fun. Uh, so first, when you upload image, make sure you have appropriate copyright permissions. And once you utilize practicing using um, images to generate another images, also make sure you use your personal image or generating new images to reference your generations. And Obviously, while you're referencing a uh, generated image, make sure you also practice ethical usage. Avoid naming artists in your text prompt or utilizing their work without their consent. Labeling uh, AI-generated content this way keeps transparent with whoever is watching or reading your content and just make sure you build that trust moving forward. Uh, implement documentation for frameworks. This is going to be critical moving forward to document documenting your AI workflows, what kind of text prompts you used, what kind of a source image is involved in your workflow. Um, even uh, especially when you'll get hired by um, major luxury brands, they're probably going to start asking you these things if you want to work with them. The capability and the limitations are very important because understanding what AI can and cannot do is critical, especially what AI cannot do, because that will tie into what kind of use cases you can use with AI. So first, obviously, everybody knows AI struggles with hands and teeth, and AI also struggles with text. AI also struggles with consistency with characters and the frames. And AI also struggles with exactly recre uh, recreating exactly the same product, physical product in images. And we'll talk more about it later. And AI obviously requires human in the loop approach at this point of um, the technology. Um, let's talk about capabilities. 
So AI tool can produce very innovative and align visual with brand identity, generating unique and on-brand visuals. This is a common myth where a lot of people are coming to me and think, asking or think AI is not capable of generating uh, on-brand visuals or following brand guidelines or client briefs. This is false. You just need to learn how to navigate and control direct AI tools. Uh, obviously, unlimited ideas and without budget constraints. This is a very cool feature that comes within AI. Uh, AI can be very cost effective for creative work and saving both time and money. So another game, image one, two, three, four. Raise your hand if you think image one is AI. Raise your hand if you think image two is AI. I'll feel more. <laughs> what about number three? What about number four? Okay, very interesting. So they are AI generated. Um, so this leads into the first use case, stock images. I actually conduct uh, research on my social media with these exactly images I just showed you guys. A lot of creative people actually told me these are very, so the question is, are these images final deliverable ready for a client? Surprisingly, a lot of people said yes, or at least they are ready for a stock image. Here are some more comments. Um, so usage number two is for fashion and accessory brand. So this is a actual photograph, um, photographed by a, a friend of mine in China, a photographer. This is a real human being. And I enhanced it with AI generated background for Chinese Lunar New Year because it's the dragon year this year. Um, so as you can see, the original image has half head cut off. So I extended with Jin Feel and added the background with uh, Me Journey and uh, added the skin texture and the lights to match with the background. Here are more example of what AI can, what we can use for uh, fashion ac accessory brands. This is original photo for photographed by a Euro European photographer, very talented friend of mine. And this is the enhanced image um, with AI driven methods. And this is her original photo. And this is the final I uh, enhanced with AI image, uh, AI, AI tools. Here is use case number three, graphic design, obviously. Um, this is actual uh, a mock-up I did quickly for Sephora. They have an event called Sephora. Um, you can see the, if you're a graphic designer, you can see this is not very clean. It's kind of messy. Um, so there's a lot of editing work it needs to be done if you wanted to deliver this for a client. But good thing is we can utilize a vectorized AI or Adobe's tool to vectorize this file and edit the path and cleaning it out um, to be more presentable. But this is just a rough draft. And here is another example. I have a camp, so I host camp. And at the end of camp, uh, some my a camper requested a certificate. And I thought, uh, what if I just use AI to do a very unconventional certificate? So this is the placeholder and I swapped her photo and I put the texts in because AI cannot generate texts like this. So this was done in Photoshop or you can do it with Illustrator. But if you can see the details are kind of messy if you zoom in, but this is good for like a fun, quick mock-up if you want to share on social. So use case number four for consumer packaging goods. We've already seen this at the beginning for King Forex. This is the iPhone photo I shoot at home. And this was the final uh, enhanced or merged with, uh, within Photoshop. Here are some more examples. This is iPhone photo. This is the final photo. You can see it here. And the reason... Um, I shot it this way because some of the reflection and the color from the this background image. Um, so that's why I did some different background color. And a more example of iPhone shot image later on integrated into AI driven um, AI image background with AI driven methods. Um, obviously, in here, all the models are AI uh, AI generated. They're none of these people are real. 
And same thing with these. The, uh, these are multiple product placements generated by AI. This definitely takes a long time to really integrate, but then there's a lot of the details and the still flawed, um, not perfect. If you want it to be 100% perfect, photograph is still the way to go. So here's the example of a, a previous image where you can do very tight zooming shot. So all of these screen grabs are from this image. Another example or use case for a pop-up experience design concept. This is a um, venue called the Archery in SF, and this is the actual venue photo. And I quickly did some pop-up experience design concept. You can see it's still the same venue photo, but I just laid on top of some walls and textured rocks and floor decay furnitures to kind of quickly, a very quick way to visualizing what this space can be. Uh, obviously, this is not going to be a final deliverable for a client, but as a pitching stage for quickly visualizing your idea, this is a easy way to go about it without doing 3D rendering. Jewelry product image. These are original photo from this brand. And I utilize this to inspire me um, to create these images. And the reason uh, you can see because th the photo was done beforehand, be before I generated the image. So I utilize the sort of a, when I did my text prompt, I did a, a green background and more of an off-white background to try to match the lighting with these jewelry. So that way it looks more authentic, looks more real. And then later on, I added some reflections in Photoshop. So here is my exact workflow. And this workflow is something I have developed and not, it's not something everybody needs to follow, but I found this is very useful. So I always start, not always, but it's very useful to start with in ChatGPT to do some brand research. I will show you my workflow later for ChatGPT. And then you can also start with some simple text prompt draft this way. Then I go to an image generation model like Me Journey, and I utilize the ChatGPT um, first draft text prompt, and I do some edits on my own. So you can see there's arrow going back and forth. So sometimes this is a iteration phase where I go back and forth a few times until I nail down a very good text prompt. And then moving forward, once you have a great image, you know that you're going to use for your AI-driven background image, then I do go ahead to shot to shoot the uh, photo of the product on my phone with the correct lighting and the correct angle. And sometimes you can do this reversely, like what I did with the jewelry brand, which I actually, ins the jewelry images was uh, inspired me to create my text, uh, text prompt and uh, in image background. And next step is the AI enhancement, uh, which is optional. This is not uh, something you really have to do unless you really want to go very, very detailed image and a very complex image. Um, this step is the following after you shot your photos and you wanted to enhance your image. So for a complex image, I actually recommend to do some pre-Photoshop work before you l upload it into one of these uh, AI enhancement tool. The re reason is in AI enhancement tool serves as a amplifier. So if your model has the six, six fingers, it's not going to help you fix that six finger issue. So you need to pre Photoshop that before you put it into image enhancement. And after that, we do the most critical uh, part of this workflow, which is the Photoshop product image integration. You can further uh, do some detailed retouching work, but then also merging our product shot you did here um, in this step. And this step is important because you you don't want to reverse this step. Um, this needs to be your final stage before you do any color grading in Lightroom or other photo editing work, because if you are reversing this step, um, 
put it back into the image enhancement tool, your body, uh, your text on the bottles or label will be messed up because remember the limitation is AI cannot generating the text correctly. So here is my full workflow. And then we're, we're going to dive into a little bit more the each steps. So everybody knows ChatGPT. I don't want to go too, too in-depth in this step, but just the three key points I always tell people, context, instruction, and exam example. Always prevent, prevent as much context as you can and the specific instruction step by step. And if you have example and use example, um, in ChatGPT. So here is my thread I pre-made, a very, very simple one where I just feed into the link of my product. And we're using King Forex as example. I asked it to research the brand a little bit in the brand positioning, target market, branding element, etc. So this is the content is spritzed out. So I'm basically preparing ChatGPT with the context it needs to know in order for me to create a campaign photo text prompt. And then I just went ahead and asked, I need a, a photo campaign for this image. I gave some specific elements, including the color palette. I know I want a red and a yellow. And it asked two separate text prompts. One is still life image, another one's lifestyle with model. And asked a specific model or wearing high fashion color, colorful clothes. And you can be very specific here too. You can ask. Um, you know, diversity, you can ask a very detailed thing here. Um, so it turned, it gave me two of these images, uh, two of these text prompt. So I will, next step, I'll grab this and I will put it into uh, my uh, me journey. But these images is not something I will end it up with because I normally will just either edit it, the text prompt on my own, or I will go ahead you know, change it into uh, inside of ChatGPT. I will talk furthermore, do additional fine tuning. So this is a very simple workflow for ChatGPT. Um, and let's go to the next right, workflow here. here. Is. This is my Me Journey fine tuning workflow. I pre-recorded a Me Journey fine tuning image process. I'm gonna go over. So this is our initial image. I stopped here. I'm like, oh, this is good composition that I can work with it and you can tell there's a lot of details that's wrong with this image so that's why we need to find a particular image and this is my text prompt and i used image reference these two images that i have generated in the past that's also about social scene so we can go over some of these images and you can see a subtle difference of the image then from here i was trying to generate slightly different of images and i select you can see the shadow difference and the hands differences from each images and this is definitely a process and I always tell my campers or students to, if you are generating a campaign, and then we do have a placeholder because that way we need, a, we can save the space for our actual product. In this case, this bottle with placeholder for the actual products. And then we wanted to encourage people to remove the bottle itself, or the, aka the product itself, within Me Journey, utilizing better region inside of Me Journey first and try to do that. And then you can always clean up inside of Photoshop when we do product Photoshop integration, but it's always preferred to remove the products inside of Me Journey first. So you can see here, we remove the bottle by using the region, just very straightforward. You select the area with the variation tool and you need to tweak your text prompt to remove any tokens and keywords uh, about the product and the bottle itself in order to actually uh, tell Me Journey that you want the bottle to gone to in the selected area. Otherwise, just gonna generate different version of the bottle. Start, started further fine tuning, changed subtle little details of the elements and uh, trying to figure out what is the best hand gesture for everybody or like all the characters here at one point. And I realized that the woman here, this woman, her body gesture was just not right. There isn't really a neck and it just doesn't look very authentic. So I started in painting the woman to a point that I am happy with. I changed her outfit and I selected this character in the end with this outfit. And then I realized I want to stick with the same color palette with for this character's clothes as well. So I variationed this character or her outfit and in the end ended up with this dress for her. And I further try to tweak the fingers as much as, sorry, it's just getting a little too long. Um, but that's my step for 
for uh, fine tuning images inside of Mid Journey. And then next, I want to do go go over the Photoshop part. So Photoshop yeah. integration for AI driven product image. First, placing the product onto the AI generated image. So this is iPhone shot, and you need to carefully select your object. Use object selection tools. You may have to fine tune the edges a little bit. And then next, you do a layer cut and make sure your product is in the correct area with the correct angle you want it. You may need to clean up uh, some of the object behind your product so they don't show. And next, we do light adjustment. To do that, it's go to the image adjustment, and then you tweak the curves, you tweak the saturation, and the shadows and the highlights and selective colors, etc. until you're happy and satisfied with your product, match seamlessly with your AI-generated background. Sometimes we need to do mask layers so we can bring certain elements in front of your product. And here we're using generative fill to kind of further clean up some of the bottle and the glass area, the cap area, and just combination of a object selection tool or selecting the edges. Generally, when I use generative fill, we do leave it uh, empty at first. And then if that doesn't work, we'll add a text prompt. And voila, this is the yeah, so this is the uh, Photoshop integration. Obviously, it's a fast forward version of how I normally do the integration. Um, so the call to action for today, discover your own AI-driven use cases. Obviously, my use cases may not work for you, and you may have your unique use cases. That goes into de develop your own AI-driven framework, workflow, and tool stacks. Like, like I mentioned, everybody probably have pr preferred tools. And I prefer Me Journey. Somebody prefer Stable Diffusion or other tools. And practice using AI responsibly and ethically is always important. We all creatives, designers here, so res um, respect each other's work is very critical. Um, don't rely on only one tool. Learn how to stitch AI tools together into a system, a framework that you develop. That that is the goal um, for today. Some additional posts to check out, AI-empowered creatives, designer in 2024, style reference in image, and the EU AI Act. Um, you can stay connected with me in Instagram, LinkedIn, or additional resources at every week weekly newsletter. All right, thank you so much. And time-wise, it's hard to say because when you are shooting a campaign, there's just so many people involved. There's a pre-production work, there's a post-production work, there's a shooting day. I would say um, those more complex image, it, it would take me a whole day to finish. But in terms of if you, you're doing the photo shoot for real, that's weeks of a planning and the shooting day and the post-production. So tons of time and budget as well because... Uh, a photo shoot like that with models easily 10k 20k 30k um here it's just me so I, yeah i am not really automating in this point at this point but i would recommend to start categorizing your past image into folders especially if you a me journey user on the website you can um, do different folders and that way you categorize different photo folders then you can use as image reference, style reference, character references. That way is kind of automating because it, it is saving your time a lot. Um, but other than that, I do have my regular sort of a prompt structure I follow through. And a lot of the automating is me having conversation with ChatGPT because once you have one really solid text prompt, you can always use that as a template example and just ask ChatGPT to sw switch the color palette, lo location, uh, camera angles, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's already pretty uh, automated for me. I don't need uh, anything to uh, more than that. <laughs> For now, because there are just so many moving parts in this technology, they are, I guess, it dep I have currently talked with a lot of a, sort of a, a luxury brands. They, they internally, they have, everybody's been looking at it. 
but nobody is really pushing it into a campaign um, and is sharing it publicly yet. Besides Coca Cola, I know since even last year, early last year, they generated as a full on videos with Studio Body Fusion. Um, but they're a major brand. I, I assume they have a big legal team to back them up. It only works with me journey generated character. So if you are using a photograph of some real human, it just doesn't turn out great. And also it doesn't work with multiple character in one frame yet. So some of these images I have generated with multiple models. So far me journey can only pick up one face at a time. So you can use one consistent model in a collection of photo, but only one model at a time in the one photo.